Well, President-elect Trump says the media is overblowing concerns about conflicts of interest with his businesses. Listen to this. It's a much bigger business than anybody thought. It's a great business, but I'm going to have nothing to do with it. It's actually a very simple situation. It's not a big deal. Well, Mr. Trump added he will hold a news conference in early January to discuss how he will divest from his businesses. Joining me now, executive editor for the Weekly Standard, Fred Barnes. And Fred, he says uh, this is much simpler than the media is making it out to be. But at the same time, his disclosure to the Federal Election Commission was pages and pages and pages mm -hmm. of businesses. It looks complex to me. Well, it is complex, and it, uh, this is not a simple thing. And I think the problem that Donald Trump has is that he's being correct, he's being right at his own expense. Now look, why does he want to be uh, badgered and, <clears throat> and persecuted week after week for the rest of his presidency by uh, the mainstream media and Democrats landing on him about the potential conflicts of interest and apparent ones and maybe even some actual ones, which is exactly what they'll do. It would be easier if he would just stop that kind of abuse against him and say, okay, I'll put my, all my businesses in a blind trust. Or there are many things he can do. He doesn't have to adhere to any particular plan, but, but he can just get that out of the way, spare himself that abuse. Well, I'm curious to see how he's going to do this, because he has obviously yep. said with the foundation, he says, I'm getting rid mm -hmm. of that, so I don't have this, yep. the, the mm -hmm. pressure uh, from, like you talk about, the media, mm -hmm. everybody else harping at him on it. But yeah. uh, businesses, he can't, he can't do a blind. It's not like you have three mutual funds in a I IBM know. stock or something. Yeah. This right. is calm. He's got biz, all kinds of different businesses all over the world. You can't. Mm -hmm sell them, even if you put them for sale today, it would take you years to sell them. Sure it would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he could head in some direction uh, that would show um, a good faith on his part. And he, I mean, he sold all his stock, I believe. And you're right, he's right. getting rid of the foundation. Uh, and these businesses are, are a bigger problem. But uh, look, there is a way where it's obvious that he's, did, he's not involved in any conflicts of interest. Look, you could argue, and, and, and Trump may argue that, well, if they're not attacking me on this, uh, the press will be attacking me on something else. And that's true. But I think this agony over his businesses and conflicts and so on is something that would be wise for him to dispose of quickly. Well, I'm, I'm, I can hardly wait to see what he, what he comes up with, because I'm sure he has a, a card of his sleeve on it. But um, it does look complex to me. Listen, let me get your take on this business okay. about the Russian sanctions in the 11th mm -hmm. hour. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I, I agree that they're, uh, they're uh, uh, appropriate, and they would have been appropriate several years ago, as a number of people have said, uh, not just Republicans, uh, have said. And here's, but here's the problem doing him, what, a month, uh, less than a month before he leaves office? When he does this, it has no deterrent effect. The whole idea of taking some sanctions is it will uh, prevent uh, the Russians from doing it uh, the same thing sometime later because they won't, uh, they won't want to have those sanctions and, and any punishment uh, again. But with, Ob with Obama leaving and we're getting a new president, uh, they can say, well, look, this is just Obama. Uh, this doesn't affect us, really, uh, in any it, in any serious way. And if the Russians conclude that, they'll be correct. I have, uh, uh, tell me I'm crazy, but I've got this, okay. this, this theory. Well, I know. Um, mm -hmm. This is with Israel, the UN, Russia. Donald Trump has a full plate with domestic policy. He's got a lot mm -hmm. to fix in our federal government. Yep. Is this a uh, Pay attention over here. Let's throw let's throw the Russia the, the international situation, foreign affairs into a mess. So he's gonna he's not gonna have time to focus on fixing the U.S. <laughs> Uh, well, look, there are a lot of people, uh, politicians in America and the media that don't have his best interests at heart. That, uh, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, I think Donald Trump can uh, uh, keep a number of balls in the air effectively uh, because he has a pretty good idea what he wants to do in the Middle East regarding Israel and I think Russia as well. The domestic stuff, though, there's going to be a lot of it. You know, there's Obamacare, there's the tax plan, there are all these things. It, it, it'll be difficult, but uh, this is why you have a cabinet. And, and uh, uh, you know, they do have a 100-day plan. They have a 200-day plan. 
That's a re that's a really good point because yeah. one of the things that we've we've learned about Donald Trump is as a businessman, he's mm -hmm. a huge delegator. That's his MO. He that, does delegation. That's a great that's a great trait to have in a leader. Uh, Ronald Reagan was a very good delegator. Yep. You yep. know, he was accused of, well, he doesn't know what's going on. Of course he knew what was going on. He just delegated very effectively. If Trump can copy that, boy, he'll be a successful president. There were, uh, you, you remind me very well. That's exactly what they said about that B actor won't know what's going on. But yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but he brought in some top-notch people and you read presidency. Reagan, you read Reagan's diaries uh, and you realize he knew everything that was going on and he was a step or two ahead of all of his aides. Yeah, very underrated in the beginning. Fred Indeed. Barnes, always good to talk to you. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it, Tom. Happy New Year. Same to you, Fred.